Welcome to Minity Maths. This video combines all of our videos on the topic of area for you to work through all in one go. We will cover how to find the area of squares, rectangles, triangles, parallelograms, trapeziums, and compound shapes. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for weekly videos. Let's start by focusing on how to find the area of squares and rectangles. When we talk about area, we mean the amount of space that a 2D shape takes up. Here is a square which takes up one square centimeter of space. Square centimeters are one of the ways in which we can measure the area of a shape, usually when the area is small. Bigger areas are often measured in square meters. Have a look at this rectangle, it takes up 6 square centimeters of space. What if I were to ask you to draw a rectangle that has an area of 12 square centimeters? See how many different rectangles you can make. Now, what if I were to ask you how many different rectangles you could make with an area of 100 cm squared? This would take a lot longer than the previous task as the area is much larger. Could there be a quicker way? Let's have a look at these rectangles. We have labeled the length and width as well as the area of each one. Is there anything you notice? Well, the area can be calculated by multiplying the length of a side by the width. Therefore, the formula for finding the area of a square or rectangle is length times width. Let's have a look at this rectangle. It has a length of 10 meters and a width of 4 meters. If we multiply the length times the width, we get 40 square meters. Don't forget to include the squared units when noting down an area. Have a go at these practice questions and pause the video while you work them out. Next we are going to look at how to find the area of a triangle. There are numerous ways to find the length of a triangle, in this video we are going to focus on the basic formula which we can use when we already know the vertical height and the length of the base. Let's have a look at this triangle. B represents the length of the base, and H represents the height. Notice that the height is not a length of one of the sides here, it is the perpendicular height, in other words, the vertical height of the triangle. This means the height is measured from the base at a right angle. When we know these measurements, we can use this formula for working out the area of the triangle. We multiply the base with the height and then halve it. You can also write the formula in this way. Both of these are the same, as we are halving the base times the height. Let's have a look at an example. This triangle has a base length of 11 cm and a height of 5 cm. Let's use the formula to calculate the area by substituting in the values of the measurements we have been given. Don't forget to include the squared units in your answer, in this case centimeters squared. But why does this formula work? Well, if we create a duplicate of this triangle and fit them both together, we can see this makes a parallelogram. The formula for a parallelogram is base times perpendicular height. Remember, the parallelogram is made up of two of the same triangles. Therefore, the area of the triangle would be half of the area of the parallelogram. So, half of the base times height. Now have a look at this example. Notice we are given a third length here of 9 meters. 
Well, we can actually ignore this as it is not the perpendicular height, and it is not the base which the height has been measured from. Let's use the formula to calculate the area. Have a go at these practice questions and pause the video while you work them out. Now we are going to explain how to find the area of a parallelogram. So what is a parallelogram? A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. Additionally, opposite sides must be equal in length. Parallelograms can come in the form of squares, rectangles, and rhombuses. Finding the area of a parallelogram when it is either a square or rectangle is fairly easy as the angles are 90 degrees. But what about when the interior angles are not 90 degrees? Well, in this case, we can't just multiply the lengths of the two sides together. But if we know the perpendicular height of the parallelogram, as well as the length of the base, we can find the area. Let's look at why. You can see here that if we take the section of the parallelogram that lies outside of the perpendicular height and move it across here, we have a square or rectangle. Therefore, we can apply a similar formula for finding the area of a square or rectangle. Instead of length, multiplied by width, we change the naming convention, length to base and width to perpendicular height. Let's have a look at this example. Have a go at these practice questions and pause the video while you work them out. Next, we are going to cover how to find the area of a trapezium. So, what is a trapezium? A trapezium is a quadrilateral, a four-sided shape, with a pair of sides that are parallel. In the UK it is called a trapezium, and in the US it is known as a trapezoid. So, how can we find the area of a shape like this? Well, we are usually given the perpendicular height of the trapezium, along with the lengths of the parallel sides, which are normally labeled A and B. With this information we can find the area, let's see how. Imagine we duplicate this trapezium and flip it upside down. We can then make a parallelogram. Now we have a parallelogram, we can see that if we add the length of A and B together, we get the length of the base of the parallelogram. We can now multiply this by the height, to find the area of this parallelogram. Remember, we duplicated the trapezium to make this parallelogram, so if we now halve the area of the parallelogram, we have found the area of the original shape, the trapezium. So here is the formula. You may see the formula written in various ways such as this. Use whichever one works best for you, as these are equivalent. Let's have a look at this example.
have a go at these practice questions and pause the video while you work them out. Finally, we are going to put together what we have learned so far, and use this to find the area of compound shapes. So, what exactly is a compound shape? Well, a compound shape is a shape made up of two or more 2D shapes, such as rectangles and triangles. Another name for compound shapes is, composite shapes. Here are some examples of compound shapes. So how can we find the area of a compound shape? Well, we can deconstruct the compound shape into basic shapes. There may be more than one way to split the shape up. We can then use the formulas for finding the area of each basic shape. Once we have done this for all the basic shapes, we can add each area together to find the entire area of the compound shape. Let's have a look at an example. First we need to decide how we are going to divide the compound shape into basic shapes. Here we have split the shape into two smaller basic shapes and have labeled them A and B. We can now use the measurements given to calculate the area of shape A and then shape B. Now that we have calculated both areas, we can add these together to find the area of the whole shape. Have a look at this next example. We can split this compound shape into a triangle and a rectangle. Let's firstly find the areas of each of these basic shapes. Notice that we need to do some calculations to find the measurements for the triangle. If we take the width of shape B, away from the entire length of this side, we are left with the perpendicular height of the triangle. Now if we take the 11 meters away from the length of the rectangle, we can find the missing length of the triangle. Now using the formula for finding the area of a triangle, we can use the measurements we have just found. As this is a right-angled triangle, Either the 6 meters length or 4 meters length can be used as the base, and the other as the perpendicular height. To find the area of shape B, we simply multiply the length of the rectangle by the width. Now we can add these two areas together to find the total area of the compound shape. Have a go at these practice questions. Pause the video while you work them out. Thanks for watching Minity Maths. Check out the channel for more videos.